Hi, welcome to the Unit 1.4 B Foundations of Chemistry video. This is an additional video. You don't have a note packet, but I'm more than glad to give it to you if you would like one just requested, and I'll print out a note packet for you. Um, but for this video, I just expect you to take notes on a separate paper. We're focusing on limiting reactant and theoretical yield, which is in line with the first half of key question two. I've also embedded some additional videos in case you need additional help. All right, so you've probably heard this analogy before about chemistry and cooking. Um, and when you think of chemistry, uh, you can think of sort of like the process that you go through when you're cooking. So um, the balance equation will be like your recipe. It tells you the ratio of reactants, which are like your ingredients and food that you can make, which is your product. The limiting reactant is the reactant that you'll run out of first or the ingredient you'll run out of first. And the theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product or food you can make. So every time a chemist goes into the lab to make something, these are the things that they need to consider when they are um, performing a reaction. So what's the balance equation? What's my recipe? Which reactant will run out of first? What's my limiting reagent? And then what's the maximum amount of product I can make? <clears throat> Okay, so one way that we um, sort of introduce this concept is by using the what's called the grilled cheese analogy. So let's say you are um, at home, you get a call from your friends and they're like, hey, we're hungry, we're coming over, we're going to play some Fortnite. And you're like, oh man, let me see what I have in my refrigerator. So you look in your refrigerator and you're like, okay, great, I've got some bread, got 10 slices here, I got seven slices of cheese. So you know what, I'm going to make some sandwiches. But the question is how many sandwiches I can make. So you go to your recipe and you know that you, um, for this recipe, it's two slices of bread for one slice of cheese. We'll make one grilled cheese sandwich. All right, so some of the questions that will probably go through your mind is like, well, which of my ingredients are going to run out first? Is it going to be the bread or the cheese? And what's the most amount or maximum amount of sandwiches or food I can make? So these are sort of things that we think about when we're cooking. And as I said, chemists think about those as well. So let's tackle the first question, which ingredient will we run out of first? This is what's called the limiting reagent. Um, and there are two ways to do it, method A and method B. For method A, we compare the reactants or ingredients. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> when we're comparing reactants or ingredients, we actually don't really need to think about the product yet because we're just focusing on which one will run out of first. So, Let's say for the 10 slices, I can ask myself, well, for 10 slices of bread, how many slices of cheese do I need? So I'm just going to compare the bread to the amount of cheese. And take a moment using the recipe and your knowledge to sort of figure it out. All right, you probably know that you would need five slices of cheese. Okay, so we know we need five slices of cheese. Now go and figure out how much, compare it to the amount of cheese that you actually have. You actually have seven slices. That's what you have in your kitchen. So you need five, but you have seven. So you have more cheese than you need. So that makes cheese an excess rea reagent or reactant. And bread is the limiting, meaning you're going to run out of bread first. So, of course, you can stop here because you have your limiting reactant. But I also wanted to show, just in case you chose to focus on the cheese first, it will give you the same answer. All right, so for you could say for seven slices of cheese, how many slices of bread do you need? And if you think about it, you think, well, I know that the according to the recipe, one slice of cheese needs double the amount of uh, two slices of bread, so that's double the amount. So that means I need about 14 slices of bread. And you go and you compare the amount that you need, which is 14, to the amount that you have, which is 10. And you're like, oh, I'm going to run out of bread because I have less bread than I than um, I, I have. So... Um, you have less bread than you need, I'm sorry. And so then, you know, from that, the bread is the limiting. Okay, let's try the same process with um, our chemical reaction. So the question is, what is the limiting reaction if you combine 12 moles of N2 and 20 moles of H2? I want to pause for a moment because this is something students oftentimes get confused. This is, uh, the problem tells you how much you actually have. So this is what you have. This is like you open your cupboards and you see 12 moles of N2 and 20 moles of H2. This is what you have. All right, so how do we tackle this problem? We're going to do it the same way. Um, let's pick one. Let's pick N2 for right now, and we're going to figure out for N2 how much H2 do we need. So we ask ourselves, for 12 moles of N2, how many moles of H2 do I need? 
So what you're going to figure out is the amount of H2 you need. And for that, we'll use some dimensional analysis because um, we can use the ratios in the balanced chemical equation sort of as conversion factors. And I want to go from 12 moles of N2 to H2. So um, I look at the coefficients in the balanced equation. It's one mole of N2 for three moles of H2. The question is, which one would go on the bottom of, this, of my conversion factor fraction? Right, so if you said N2, you would be correct because I want to get rid of N2 and I want H2 to go on top. So remember, all this information comes from the balanced equation. You just need to decide which one goes on the top or the bottom based on the units you want to cancel out. In this case, we want to cancel out moles of N2, so the one mole of N2 goes on the bottom, and H2, which we're trying to find, goes on the top. Okay, so we do the math here, and it's we've realized that we need 36 moles of H2. So this is what I need. You solve for what you need. Go back in the problem and find out how much you have. Well, you only have 20. Well, what does that tell you? That tells you that you have less um, H2. You only have 20 moles than you need, and so H2 is your limiting. Again, you can try the process instead of focusing on N2 first. You can focus on H2 first and use the amount of H2 that you have to figure out how much N2 you need. So for that case, you would say for 20 moles of H2, how many moles of N2 do I need? You start off with 20 moles of H2. Go to your balanced chemical equation to set up the uh, conversion factor fraction that you'll multiply with. And since you want to cancel out H2, the three moles of H2 go on the bottom, and what you're trying to find N2 goes on the top. All right, and then you get that you need 6.7 moles of N2. So you go into your kitchen, or, or your problem in this case, and you see that you have 12 moles of N2. Remember, the problem tells you how much you have. So you have, in this case, you have more into, into than you need. So N2 is your excess and um, H2 is the limiting. Okay, so with method A, I showed you both ways, but you only need to do one of these when you're finding a limiting reagent. So only do one. So you either use N2 to find out how much H2 you need or H2 to find out how much N2 do you need. They'll both give you the same answer. Okay, so let's look at method B now, which is where instead of comparing the two reagents, you're going to determine the amount of product or food um, for each reactant or ingredient. What do I mean by that? So what we'll do is we'll look at for the 10 slices of bread, how many sandwiches can we make? And for the seven slices of cheese, how many sandwiches can we make? So let's start with the 10 slices of bread. Um, how many sandwiches can we make? Well, we look at our recipe, we know there's a two to one ratio. For two slices of bread, you can only make one sandwich. So that means for 10 slices of bread, you can make five sandwiches. For the cheese, it's a one to one ratio. So for one slice of cheese, you can make one sandwich. So for seven slices of cheese, you can make seven sandwiches. All right, perfect. So now that we know how much food we can make from each reactant, we have to compare these two numbers, the amount of food we can make, to sort of figure it out. The bread can only give us five and the cheese can give us seven. So we're gonna focus on the lowest number because you cannot make more than you have. So that means that the thing that's gonna run out of first is the 10 slices of bread because it only can give, it can only give us five sandwiches. We can't make the additional two because we're gonna run out of bread first. So the bread is our limiting reaction because it gives us the least amount of food or product. All right, let's try the same thing with um, a limiting reagent problem. And so what's the limiting reactant if you combine 12 moles of N2 and 20 moles of H2? So this is the same problem as before, we're just using a different method. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to um, figure out for a given reactant how much food or product we can make. So let's start off with 12 moles of N2 and see how many moles of NH3 that will give us. Okay, so for 12 moles of N2, how many moles of NH3 can we make? And in this case, we're gonna go from N2 to NH3, so we'll use the one mole of N2 and the two moles of NH3 from our balanced equation to figure that out. You have to decide what goes on the bottom and what goes on the top. We wanna cancel out N2, so that should go on the bottom and NH3 goes on the top. And then that gives us 24 moles. So that means we can make 24 moles of NH3. We're gonna do the same thing for the 20 moles of H2, and we're gonna 
figure out, well, for the 20 moles of H2, how many moles of NH3 you can make. All right, so 20 moles of H2. We want to solve for the moles of NH3. So now we're using the 3 moles of H2 and the 2 moles of NH3 in our conversion factor. 3 moles of H2 goes on the bottom of the core, so we can cancel them out. All right, <clears throat> and that tells us we have 13.3 moles of we in a straight. So that's how much we can make from the 20 moles of H2. Okay, so once again, we need to decide um, which one is our limiting. Should we choose the one that gives us the most amount of product or the least amount of product? Great, the one that gives us the least amount of product, because remember, you cannot make more than you have. So you're going to run out of H2 before you can make the um, additional amount of NH3. So the most you can make here is 13.3 moles of NH3. Um, and <clears throat> and so that's telling you that H2 is your limiting reactant because it's going to give you the least amount of product. Now in the case with method B, you have to do both equations. Unlike with method A, where it's like you could just compare one or the other, it doesn't matter. Here you actually need to do both because you need to compare the values that you get, the amount of product you can make, and pick the one that has the least. So the key thing with method B, you must do both. Okay, so we looked at um, the limiting reagent type question. Now we're gonna move on to the um, grilled, uh, what's the maximum amount of food you can make, which is your theoretical yield.